that you join me in a word of prayer this morning. Father, we thank you this morning, Lord, for just bringing us here, Father God, for, for bringing us here, Lord, and, and being able to, to be with you, Father God, this morning, Lord. We thank you for your word, Father God, that's about to be presented to you to us this morning, Father God. We ask that you would just bless each and every person here, Father God, and those who are at home, Lord. Place a hedge of protection around them, Lord. Bless their families, Lord. Bless their finances, Lord. For those who are struggling with health issues, Lord, we pray for healing over them right now, Father God. I lift up each and every person, Father God, that you would just um, anoint them and encourage them this morning, Father God, that they would be with you, Father God, and they would worship you this morning, Father God. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Um, I just want to bring mention is that today we may not have worship here. We will have worship after service online, but in with respect to what the authorities are asking this morning from here. So just join me, join us this morning. You can worship God with your heart. That's what God requires us to do or calls us to do is that worship is a state of mind. It's a, it's a, it's a feeling from the heart, and it's something that we give to God on a regular basis. So I want to encourage you to worship him wherever you are this morning. However you worship him, just, just worship him this morning. I also want to remind you to stay connected to us this morning. Um, you can visit us at plaog.net for all our events that are coming up. This week we have Anchor Bible Study at 7 p.m., and that's being brought to you on Zoom and also Facebook Live and, and YouTube Live. And then we also have our Children's Church at 10 o'clock this morning, so make sure that you watch that on, on our YouTube channel so you can catch that as well. And then Friday mornings we have Farms to Families, and that's our our community outreach where we give food to families so if you're in need or you have a neighbor in need make sure that you come here to the church on friday morning at 10 a.m amen and then also we also have active youth which has been um here at the church we're meeting here at the church at 6 p.m on friday nights so if you have a neighbor that has children if you have cousins if you have grandchildren get them here because they need to hear the word of god amen saturday mornings we have our men's ministry and that's being brought to you on zoom um, I think this Saturday we're doing at 4.30, so, so connect with us so that you can get that Zoom information so you can meet with a time of fellowship. Amen? So thank you, guys. We appreciate you, and we want to remind you to give your tithes and offering. Before you leave this morning, there are baskets by the doors where you can drop your tithes and offering. And if you're at home, you can visit plaog.net, and you can give through, through the website. So click on Donate, and you can give your tithes and offering there. Bless you in your giving. We thank you. And want to encourage you to worship with us today and enjoy the message. And we also have communion this morning. I hope you all have been served. If you have not been served your communion, could you just raise your hand and we will get that to you. If anyone has not received this. New technology kind of save us in the matter of this convenience is with it. If you would just peel off the top layer there, there's a wafer that is underneath it. It is white. And that'll be first level number one that we'll be working with. Thank you for Pastor John. Come on up here and join us. You'll probably need to uncover your mask just for this or slip it up, whichever is to your convenience as we continue partaking of this together. We're glad that we're here this morning together. Can you say amen to that? Amen. amen. Remember, as Pastor Mike is saying, worship is the matter of the heart first and foremost. And so it's not in the physical as much as it is in the intuitive nature of our heart and our spirit that we want to worship God in spirit and in truth. Amen? amen. I mean, you're glad that Jesus has paid it all for us. Can I get an amen to that? Amen. We are celebrating this by remembering. This is what this is about, to remind us of the great sacrifice that Jesus proved his love for us, that he laid down his life upon the cross so that we might live. And we find our salvation because of Jesus Christ. He has not only saved us, he has transformed us and continues that in our life this day. And so we keep reminding ourselves of the, the price that he paid, the love of which he has, and our hearts that is now turned to turn towards him to share our appreciation and our value in our worship to him this morning. Amen? Amen. He said this bread, this wafer, this representation is the matter of his life, the substitutionary offering of his life for our life. And so we want to take time, as the Word of God says, and Jesus broke bread and he blessed it. And we take that as to mean that he prayed over it. Would you go ahead and stand with us this morning and let's take this as an emblem as Pastor Mike leads us in prayer with this bread. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the sacrifice that you made on the cross for us, Lord, so that we would be free, Lord. We thank you for your body that is broken, Lord. For us to be free, Father God, for us to be free of sin, Lord. We thank you for what you've done on the cross for us, Lord. 
I pray right now, Lord, that if there's anything that separates us from you this morning, Father God, that it would be removed, Lord. We ask for forgiveness, Lord. We ask for guidance, Lord, for your strength, for your Holy Spirit to lead us every day, Father God. I thank you for what you've done for us and what you continue to do. In Jesus' name, let's partake. Likewise, is that he took the cup, and so we take that as the matter that he says, likewise, that we ask the blessing upon the blood of Jesus Christ. The scripture tells us that life is in the blood, and also the scripture tells us that without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. And so because it has been paid for not only his life, but the blood that washes away, though our sins, Isaiah says, be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. It is all under the blood. In fact, I'm going to preach a little bit on this this morning, but I just want you to say this out loud. I want you to say, I plead the blood of Jesus over my life. Would you say that with me? I plead the blood of Jesus over my life. And let's continue believing that as Pastor Mike leads us in the prayer for his cup that represents his blood. The other Pastor Mike? I mean, that, yes. The one and that's two there. So thank you for correcting me on that. Well, everyone wants to be like Mike. So. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Would you please? I'm try to get spiritual. <laughs> Heavenly Father, it is a privilege to be cleansed by you. Lord, we realize, and uh, this is a good reminder for us, that we don't bring purity and righteousness to the plate. We are made righteous and pure and holy because of you and you alone, that perfect sacrifice. So Lord, as we come before you this morning, we acknowledge our need of you. We acknowledge our humanness, and uh, that is especially apparent in these days. Lord, we need you. We need an amazing, perfect Savior, and you are that Savior. So as we do partake, we do so gratefully and humbly because you are the living God, and you love us more than we could ever imagine. So we thank you and praise you in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. Friends, let's partake together. Just in your hearts, just continue just to praise God. Give Him this moment. Give Him this time. Let's not rush. Just give Him your praise and thanks and your love towards Him. Thank you, God, for your gift. Thank you for your blessing of your life. Thank you, Lord, for the power that's in the blood. Thank you, Lord, for the life that we not only have that is in you, but a life that we will be together with you in the future. We thank you, God. We praise you, Father, what you are going to do in us. We thank you for your strength that you're going to give us. We thank you, Lord, for your blessings that are flowing towards us. We thank you for your plan that is a purpose that will not be thwarted by anything or anyone. We praise you, Father, because you are the one that's in control. We ask you, Lord, to calm our fears. We ask you, Lord, to give us a hope. We ask you, Lord, to believe, Lord, what you are doing is working for our good. We ask you, Lord, to protect us and provide, Lord, in all aspects of our life. So, Father, as you are Jehovah Rapha, the Lord, our healer, you are also Jehovah Jireh, the Lord, our provider. So, Lord, they're not just names. It's the reality of who you are in our lives when we lean into your word, your promises, and the trusting in your time that you will deliver, Lord, the blessings that you have set before us that we will come to experience and our praise will be growing more and more as you teach us, Lord, to walk through all challenges, through all trials, through all storms, through all times that we sometimes don't know what to do, God, you do. And so we place ourselves at the foot of the cross and say, you are Lord, you are ruler, you are sovereign, and your will will be done. We thank you, Father, for this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Amen. God bless you. As we transition to the times of which we are doing for this morning, it's kind of a situation I do want you to be aware of that as much as the authorities are in a fluid situation adjusting the matter of the parameters and the structure of what we as a church should do, I'd ask that you do pay as much as close attention to our, our website as well as our Facebook and any of our team leaders that are reaching out and connecting with you to keep you updated because things seem to be moving quite quickly one direction or another. And as much as this may seem like is a setback, 
here's what I know about God. Everything that looks that way is actually in God's kingdom a set up. And I pray that our hearts are growing towards a greater love and an anxiousness for our passion to worship God and our passion to fellowship to be an encouragement one to another. And this time that we have together is something to be cherished. It's something that we need to grasp a hold of that God would <clears throat> teach us how to manifest in us this assurance and this peace that he wants to impart upon every life. You see, everything that we go through is not so much new to the Word of God and not new to God himself, but to us, this is new. And as we navigate this, we need to trust that the same God who was in the, in the past of delivering Israel and providing all the way through, God will do the same thing here in the year of 2020. Some people call this the year of vision. Well, we definitely need some vision to see that what our hope is, it's not in this world, it's not in this government, but it is in Jesus Christ. Can I get an amen to that? Amen. amen. So we want to keep that faith and that hope that's within our life. Well, as we celebrate July 4th, I'm, I'm sure you didn't sleep well last night. I'm sure that uh, you uh, were kind of kept up and prayed a whole lot because of all the spiritual warfare that was taking place last night, that you saw the explosions of God's light just permeating our Disneyland atmosphere here. And uh, so it was quite a remarkable thing. I, I feel sorry for some of the dogs because they don't handle it so well. But nonetheless, I pray that if you didn't sleep well, that today you'll get a great nap and you'll enjoy something of a recovery in that capacity. Hallelujah. Yes, there it is, a napper right there. He's talking. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. It is for freedom. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. The gospel of Jesus Christ is all about freedom. A freedom that God wants for us to have. Freedom the way that defines that things don't control you, things don't limit you, things do not direct you. You are free in Christ, and that's the liberty Christ wants you to have. Many times people misconstrue the matter of a church or the religion and our faith that is in Jesus Christ, thinking that this is bondage thinking that serving Christ is a matter of controlling and limiting and not allowing you to experience the matter of all the things of this world. You see, there are worldviews that are in competition. There's a marketplace that there is a conversation that goes on. And how the world looks at freedom is totally different on how we look at freedom because we see it freedom from the things that our world is getting us into bondage of. We see that being set free. And so this is why Galatians, this is where Paul speaks to them and says, For you have been called to live in freedom, my brothers and sisters, but don't use your freedom to satisfy your sinful nature. Instead, use your freedom to serve one another in love. That would be the beginning to where the Word of God tells us that we would not allow to be caught up into the same regiment. This is a letter written to the Galatian church saying that you've just been delivered out of the rule and the regiment of laws. Why are you going into another idea of what Christ has called you to, but you are being limited by, which is what are called Judaizers, coming in saying, look, if you're going to be these type of people, you have to do this rule, this law, and this system. And he's telling them this is not the way that it is in Jesus Christ. There is a reason freedom that Jesus died on the cross for us to have is freedom from those things that limit us, control us, and condemn us. But we are finding the freedom, that is the discovery that God wants for us to grasp a hold of. But the problem, there are other things that are hooks, other things that are uh, reaching out to grasp a hold of you. There are other things in our culture, other things in our climate, other things in this world that is pulling at us to drag us down to tear us apart, to destroy everything within our life. You see, the plan of the enemy is given us in three ways. He says he's come to rob and kill and destroy. But he does that through much of the ways that he can get his hooks into your life to destroy you. And this is what James says. Temptations come when our own desires, which entice us, drag us away. In everything that we have, there is something, there's a weakness in every person that 
pulls at us, that draws our mindset, that contemplates the, the place that is leaning us to the matter of some type of difficulty, some type of trap, some type of problem. Now, like any trap, it has an enticement. Like anything that's trying to get you to be controlled, it has to first lure you into the trap. And that's what we live in a society that is like today. We live in a world that finds itself bound by addictions to substance and physical things and, a, and emotional things. These are things in general that I will say that we look at our culture and we can see the evidence there are things lost in that control. We, we've lost the matter of the freedom that God wants for us to have if we get caught up into that trial of that temptation. Sometimes we want to think that it's not controlling. You find that sometimes people don't know I don't have a problem. Yeah, there's denial. And others that say I could quit anytime I want. There's that faith that they'd like to believe that they can get out of the entrapment. But whether it's the emotional in the matter of anger or fear or anxiety, those types of things, whether it's physical for the matter of things that you're desiring to want to have in relationships and so on, or if it's something in the idea of substance, of alcohol and drugs and such, there are things that seems to be pleasant at first, but it's meant to entrap you and our culture, whether it be over the counter medication or other. We find that people are trapped. We find that people are losing freedom, that they are under the control of other devices, of other things, of other, whatever the other is that is limiting their freedom or destroying their freedom, or they have no freedom. Uh, this is why Jesus said when he came, he said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. Uh, good news is what the gospel is. That's what the gospel The gospel is not bad news. The gospel is good news. Jesus came to give life and life more abundantly. That's the good news. He has sent me to proclaim that captives, notice that, limitations, control, that has lost their freedom, that they will be released, and that the blind will see, and that the oppressed will be set free. Jesus came to set you free, set me free. Has he set you free? Say good amen if he has. It's the idea that God is saying, not only is he God, he is the one who sets us free. So we, we build upon that, but he points back in verse 13, but don't use your freedom to satisfy your sinful nature. Don't, don't do that to where you are just trying to live for yourself. One of the ways that you could understand the definition of what sin is, is sin is selfish. It's always consumed with yourself, your plans, your will be done. The idea of the freedom of Christ is that we are in love with, like God is in love with the whole world, meaning people, not possessions, people. You see, oftentimes we tend to think that the most powerful person in the world is those that have money and weapons and fame of authority. We think that they are the ones that, you know, that's why I want that addiction. That's why I want that entrapment of my life. I want to have these things in my life because if I have money, I'm not going to be worried about things. If I have weapons, I'll have control of things. If I have fame, then everyone's going to value who I am. If it's authority, I'll be able to make those things happen. See, oftentimes that's the entrapment of something that lures us into saying, well, that's why I'm going to work so hard. That's why I'm going to get this type of thing surrounding me. This is why I'm going to ask for people to do this for me. These are things that begin to try to entrap us to where we lose our freedom. We're somehow trying to fill a void in our hearts. Somehow we're trying to find satisfaction in us. Somehow we're trying to control it. But what we have not maybe recognize is that we're losing our freedom because we are in the entrapment of the enemy that the walls are closing in. And God is saying, I have come to set you free from the enemy's trap. And so we needed that victory. Can I say, get an amen to that? We needed that. And, and one of the things that I, I always love, it's, it's like, I don't know about you, but when I watch movies, they have a different way of looking at things for me. And one of the movies that I love is Braveheart. I don't know if you've ever seen this with Mel Gibson, but Braveheart, and it's got fantastic quotes that are in there that I think speaks volumes to the matter of the Christian faith, that it identifies in the matter of its context 
a lot of what the scripture and the word of God speaks about, but it has a way to kind of skew it to change the words, but the principles are still that valuable to us. One of the things that I love that says, but men don't follow titles, they follow courage. In other words, there's a lot of times people are looking for the matter of, hey, I, I have a title, shouldn't everything? But Mel Gibson, who plays William Wallace, who is a true figure of history, this is a guy who has been identified that he is stubborn. That's what they call William Wallace, a stubborn man to the principles of his life. Stubborn. But it's actually a compliment when it's done for the matter of the value of who he is and what he's about. It's this value that says we need to grow in the matter of our faith and grow in the matter of our capability because he makes this other statement. It says your heart is free, so have the courage to follow it. That would be, I think Jesus would say, look, I have set you free. Now live in that freedom. You have been set free, so experience all the freedom that you can have in Jesus Christ who gives you love and gives you joy and gives you peace that's poured into your life by the power of the Holy Spirit that gives you this fruit that speaks about that you'll be able to long suffer and that you'll have temperance and self-control that it speaks about that we as Christians, we as followers, we're not captivated to the emotions of the world. We're not captivated to the fears of the world. We're not captivated to the same passions of the world. We have crucified the, the lust of the flesh with all of its passions and desires to say, no, not the things of the world, but the things of the kingdom of God. That is what I hunger and thirst for because the word says that I will be filled. That's the heart that God wants for us to have. He has another quote that he says many times. It says uh, uh, in this movie, many, uh, oh yeah, all, all, every, I'm trying to think of how he says it, but it's like all men, all men die. I don't know if I can do this like dialect right, but all men die. But not many men truly live. That didn't sound like the correct dialect. <laughs> I almost sound like Sean Connery or something. <laughs> I don't know. I rehearsed it last night. It didn't show up this morning. Nonetheless. The point is not the dialect, it's the context. Many people do live, but they really don't live. Many people die, but how they die, what they die for, what that is the meaning and the purpose, that's something to grasp a hold of, of what is God's purpose for our life? What is that? Because in our life, we're going to have trouble. That's what Jesus said. In this world, you're going to face challenges, just like we're facing right now. And all of these things, there has to be something that matches that this is not a surprise to God. So what is God setting up in you and me? What is he providing for the matter of an opportunity for his power, his glory, and his joy that he wants to say, these things that seem to have control on you will not because I have come to set everyone free. And this is the joy of the freedom of which we're, we're celebrating the word, but it's more in depth and more purposeful to the kingdom of God when we speak of freedom, because it's not freedom of men by freedom by men, but it is freedom of men by the freedom that God gives through his son, Jesus Christ. See, every time there is a Pharaoh, God would raise up a Moses. Every time there's a Jezebel, God raises up an Elijah. Every time there's a Goliath, God raises up a David. You see, there's always something that's going to be a challenge, but God wants to raise up those who are saying, I am not going to allow those things to control or limit anything. The freedom of which I have is to say, I am free and you can't control me because Jesus is the one who is in control. No better way that we see this is in Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that the government says, you must bow the institution of the time of authority says you have to do this. But they said, listen, we don't follow you because we're free. What, what do free men do? Free men do things differently that don't fit in sometimes with the culture. It doesn't fit in sometimes with the authority. And I'm not preaching a life or a religion of rebellion. What I am talking about is a faith that is based on Jesus Christ. That no matter what others do to you, God is still on the throne. And if God wants to deliver you, and this is what they said, even if God doesn't deliver us from the fire, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, even if you don't, God doesn't rescue us, we're not bowing to this because we're free men in Jesus Christ. I add a little bit to it, but they're free to serve God and they're not bowing to anything else. 
So as for us, is that we need to realize that our faith, we need to realize that God's shaping our heart is a freedom that he has said, this is your freedom. Why don't you walk in that freedom and not allow other things, not allow other people, not let anything control the freedom that Jesus has for you, for me. That we can be free from substances, free from the lures of the enemy, free from condemnation, that we can truly be free because we know where I'm headed in this scripture. You see, Revelations 12 says, and they have defeated him. So this is Jesus, remember in the beginning in John chapter 8, it says, John the Baptist says, and here comes the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Remember that? In Revelations in 12, we see that, and they have defeated him by the blood of the Lamb and by their testimony. Two points I want to bring with, and then I want to home in on this last part. They defeated him by the blood of the Lamb and by their testimony. And they did not love their lives so much that they were afraid to die. I think that the most dangerous person in the world is one who is not afraid to die. Jesus came to this earth because God loved that he sent him so that Jesus would die on the cross for our sins. If this cup may pass from me, Father, let it be so, but nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. I'm not saying it's easy. What I'm saying is that someone who understands the freedom that is going to be brought into their life is not controlled. He, in fact, Pharaoh thought that he was the one. Don't you realize, Jesus, that I am the one who can set you free? And Jesus replies, says, no, you have no authority. There is no authority that you have. You think you have authority. You think that you have power. But if I needed to, simply Jesus could have snapped his fingers and 10,000 angels could come and rescue and deliver victory in his life. It could happen at any point in time. Pharaoh thought, just like the world tends to think that they have control over things. You see, God sets up kings and he takes down kings. He's the one who puts everyone in authority that though they think they got there on their own merit, they got there by their own strength, they got there by their own wit, they got there by their own fortune, no, God is the one who is supremely in control, even when people do not understand that. See, God's ways are higher than our ways, and sometimes that's why we don't see it. He moves in mysterious ways, and that's why we can't always predict it. But God is sovereign, and he is in control. And when he says to us, the freedom that which he wants us, for us to have is don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of what other people say. Don't be afraid of what other people post. Don't be afraid of what other people try to tell you who you are. Don't be afraid of those who threaten you. Don't be afraid of the things of emotions that try to get you. Don't be afraid of the voice in your head that's trying to cause fear and intimidation for that who is the enemy. Don't let that take away your freedom that is in Jesus Christ. See, this is something that even free men wrote a long time ago. It said this part, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal and that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights that among these are life and liberty and the pursuit of happiness. We can go through the Old Testament, we can go through current times, but the greatest revelation, the greatest experience of truth that we will ever hold is a man who laid down his life, and so he is the one who set us free. That when we put our lives to the matter of our faith that is in Jesus Christ, that he has now set us truly free. And then it tells us in Romans 1, 6, excuse me, it tells us in Galatians 5, 13, the last part, instead, use your freedom to serve one another. Use, use this freedom, that we would share that freedom, enjoy the blessings of that freedom, that this would be the serving of what we do, is that we have this desire, one for another, that we are free and we find others that we want to encourage to be set free. We celebrate the joy of which we have in relationship with others that are set free. And we grow in that and we learn from that and we experience that and we get better at that because we are learning that the freedom that God has for us has levels that we can grow in as well as we can use that to bless others with. 
Chris Mills, who on Wednesday night in our Bible study says, hey, I want to share a testimony. I forgot how many days he had told us, but that he had been set free from this thing that he's been trying to be set free from. I think it's smoking, right? Am I correct in that? And it was like teen days, something teen days, I think he said. And we just rejoice over that because we know that he wants to be set free from that. And we want to rejoice in the matter that we'd like for him to be set free in that. This is his desire. This is his passion. But there's more than just the smoking. There's more than just the, the things in this world that tries to entrap us that God wants for us to be set free. You, you know when I say there's addictions in this world, you, you can get some images. You might even have people that you know that come to mind that when you talk about addictions and you have things that maybe internally it's yourself that you are wrestling with God and saying, Lord, how can I get set free from all of these things in my life? How do I get set free? Well, it's, the answer is not so much people, though they can assist. And that is part of what God says, but it's where, where we find our freedom from. See, I can't set you free, but I can point you to one who can. I may not have all the answers to help you get free, but I know who does, so I'm going to send you to go meet him. It's that type of faith that we need to have that is trusting that God can utilize our freedom to share that and shine that for others to see the freedom of which we have. And so this is Romans 16 that tells us where we get our freedom from. For I am not ashamed, Paul says, of the gospel of Jesus Christ, because it is the power of God. It's not mind power. It's the power of God. It's not willpower. It's the power of God. It's not getting to the right institution. It's the power of God. It's not finding the right relationship. It's the power of God. It's not getting the right uh, diagnosis. It's the power of God. God makes the miracle happen. That's why we find freedom. That's why we find deliverance. That's why we find the fulfillment that God is able to do in our lives. And then Paul says, look, let me just tell you about my life. He says, this is how the power of God shows up in my life. My old self, in other words, I'm now free. That old one was captive. That old one was a slave. That old person was controlled. But that's the old one. It says, my old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer then, he says, I who live, but Christ that now lives in me. Notice that. How is he doing this? Because Christ is living in him. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. His all faith, his all power is connected in Jesus Christ, who lives in him and transforms him. So let me just be transparent. As you, we say many times, just because you come into the church doesn't make you a Christian. There are lots of times people try to get that, well, what's the psychology of this? Okay. Well, what's the expectancy of this? Okay. All right, so what is the system of this? Okay. And this is what people tend to try to do. It's like, okay, you're just doing the exercises, and I need to do these exercises. So if I do what you do by copying it, then therefore I will find freedom, or therefore I'll find joy, or therefore I'll find some type of fulfillment. And this is what happens many times is people come in and they copy. They duplicate what other people seem to do, but they're not connecting to the vine. They're not connecting to the power. They're not connecting to the life they're not connecting to Jesus Christ. And this is evident throughout all the scripture that points out that in the last days, many will say, hey, wait, didn't I do all the exercises? Wait, didn't I go to church? Wait, didn't I say all the right words? And Jesus is going to say, depart from me. I don't even know who you are. The reason is very clear is because they have not collect, connected to the power of God who is Jesus Christ. This is the victory of which we have if we trust and believe. Ephesians, Paul says this, you have been saved by grace through faith. That's why it's trusting in the Son of God. You see, Jesus wrote the law with his finger, but he experienced them, he demonstrated his grace through his hands being wide open. 
It, it was him that was full of grace and truth. It was him that was filled with love and passion. It was him that came to set the captives free. And he came to do that for you and for me. And no matter where you're struggling, no matter where you are in your journey, though you have made advancement, though you feel like you're defeated, however you are, I want you to know that the power of God can set you free right now, today. And he can complete that and continue that and develop that and show you that the life of freedom is more satisfying than anything else that the world has to offer. Might I also add that we know that this world is one day going to end? Wouldn't we want to live for the freedom that is for eternity versus the temporary? So God is teaching for us to grow that we would have his love in us and us for him by trusting him and that we would know that he has finished the work. Not you and I. We're not earning our way. We're not trying to do all the right things that somehow, luckily, God says, that's enough and here's a bonus. You see, Jesus hung on the cross and before he died, uttered these words. You know it. It is finished. The gospel's done. He's finished it for you. But you have to make that choice to put him on the throne of your life, that your passion is for him, that your trust and faith is in him, and you then truly will be set free. So this is why Paul then concludes with the very opening of what he starts with the church in Galatia. Christ has truly set you free. So make sure you stay free. Make sure you continue to not being entangled with the entrapments of this world. Don't, don't get caught up into the patterns of what other people do that leads to bondage. Don't, don't follow the things of temptations of the weakness of your flesh or the weakness of your eyes or the pride of life to put yourself into the environment that's going to lead to bondage and cause all kinds of pains and suffering. Lean into his everlasting arm. He will make your life truly free. In Jesus' name. Father, we thank you that our faith has brought us to an opportunity that is in you. We know that you are the way of life. You are the door. You are the truth. And Father, our desire truly is that God, if you would help us as we navigate life, as we navigate decisions, that, Father, you would teach us what it is that we could have, that freedom that is because of you in our life. Help us to be brave. Help us to be strong. Help us to be wise. That, Father, that we can do making these choices to say, Father, we need you to help us, Lord. You said you've come to be the one that sets us free. You take away the sins of the world. Lord, there might be some of us here this day, some here online, that we're saying, God, I need you to take away these addictions. I need you to take away these things that are limiting me. I need you to take away these things that are destroying me. I need for you to come in and clean every aspect of every heart corner of my life, every type of challenge God, somehow it needs to be removed so that your freedom, your joy, your love, your peace, your freedom come into my life. I could find, Lord, everything that you have promised that I would be able to realize it. See, so many things have happened in our world that has tarnished our heart. So many things that have challenged our heart. So many things that have brought fear in our heart or anger in our heart. Some things, Lord, that we're struggling with and we don't know how to handle it. And somehow we just feel like Maybe this is the norm or this is the stuck nature of where I'm going to be at. And the enemy wants you to believe the lie that you can't get away from it, that you can't find peace from it, that you can't find a way out from it. Jesus says, I'm here. I'm here to set you free. And all we have to do is say, God, I need your power. I need your power to come into my life. Set me free from all the things that are controlling me, all these things that are affecting and impacting me, 
Help me to be set free that I can love as if I've never been hurt, that I can enjoy life as knowing that it has no control over me, that I can have a peace that, Father, no matter what happens as difficulties of trials or storms or tests, that, Father, through all of those things, I will know that my trust is in you. You will make a way. You will give me the power. You will set me free. If you're online, I'm just going to ask you to pray this simple prayer. You in this room going to ask you to pray this if this is where you are asking God to help you. Just say this simple prayer. Lord Jesus, come into my life. I need your power. Set me free from everything that is not a part of your plan. I plead the blood of Jesus on my life and guide me now to my purpose, the destiny that you have set before me, that I may realize what you have done by setting me free. I thank you, Jesus. I receive this every day as I open my life to you because I no longer live, but you now live inside of me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Amen. We thank God because he is in control. Amen? Amen. Let's give the Lord a praise offering this morning. We can do that this morning. Praise God. Amen. Pastor John, we come up and we're going to conclude with this. And if you would like to watch a little bit later on the line, you'll see the worship team has recorded a worship so you can enjoy your worship at your time and your leisure. In case you didn't know it, not only is this a live service, but it's then kept, recorded, and you can watch it again, or you can catch it at another time that is to your convenience. God bless you. Well, thank you, Pastor Word. We've been set free, but set free for a reason. And we can use that freedom to make a difference in this world. Um, when you... When we consider characters like this William Wallace, um, there's even a, a preacher I know from even before that time, or around the same time, John Knox, who was said of him that uh, the Queen spoke and said, I fear the prayers of that one man more than all of the armies of the world. We can live larger than life by seeking God, being sold out to him, and then looking for those opportunities to make a difference. So we have an opportunity this week to take the Spirit of God with us and look for the opportunities to make a difference, to live with that courage, to use the freedom that we've been given. You see, we've been given the freedom. It's God's gift to us. And as we're set free from those struggles, the, uh, the things that hold us down, as we're set free, that's God's gift to us. But what we do with that is our gift back to God. So let's give graciously to God. And for those of us that are here this uh, morning, we'd like you to stand. We're going to close with uh, hopefully a very encouraging word of prayer because God is with us and he wants to do great things through us. Heavenly Father, we are thankful for the gift of freedom. You sent our Lord Jesus to willingly embrace the cross. He didn't want to give up his life for us. But he chose to do it so that we could be truly free. Lord, so that we could become overcomers. We know that you are with us. We know that you love us. And we know that there are things that you would like to accomplish through us. So help us to be people that look earnestly to you and to you alone. That live triumphant, overcoming lives. Who put to death those things that we struggle with, Lord and allow you and your spirit to truly live in us. Help us to be people who live and give freedom, Lord. Help us to make the most of every opportunity, to be mindful of one thing, that we want to truly live each and every day, that fear will not be our master, but joy and purpose and living in the freedom that goes with that. Father, we give you ourselves, and we ask you to live wonderfully through us, for the glory of our risen King Jesus. Amen. Let's make a difference, friends. God bless you.
gotta try to do right when life's doing me wrong. I gotta shake the dust off my feet and keep marching on. When trouble weighs me down, brings me to my knees. Lord, my needs are many, but that's a pretty, yeah, a pretty good place to be. Don't blame it on the preacher, cause the preacher done told. The devil's got a target on my heart and my soul. But let me tell you, brother, what the devil don't know. The lower I go, the more I'm gonna live with you. Higher, higher, higher. I'm gonna live with you. Higher, higher, higher. God Almighty, you are worthy. Higher, higher, higher. I may never get money. I may never have fame, hey. but if you put me in the spotlight, hey. I'll point it back your way. Cause standing at the top was never my goal. Put me on the mountain and I'll tell the whole world. Shout a hallelujah till I hit the dirt. Try. 
I never